three and three, two, one. Hi guys, thanks for clicking on this video. If anything, what we're going to make today is a stamp seal or seal stamp. A seal stamp is something that is pressed onto a subsurface that may be um, hardens eventually. And the goal is to leave a mark on that particular surface. So here now in AutoCAD, we have a logo that we made. So it consists of lines, arcs, symbols, and letters. Now what we're going to do is first we have to resize it. That way we can predict uh, on how long it will be printed later on. Um, but first and foremost, we should center it first. Let's see. Um, let me take it center first. Oh, it's not so. I'll just have to center this one and probably scale it afterwards. Um, okay. You can try. You can try this on any logo or every any any marking you want, as long as you have a 3D printer at home or has access to one. Wait, right. let's just find the center of this logo first. Okay. It seems that the logo is not um, symmetrical. Maybe it's made that way. Maybe not. Well, anyways, we will select the center. Okay, oops. Move. Uh, center. And now, move to the zero, zero coordinates. Now we have it centered. We will resize this, resize, or rescale this logo. I'm thinking of uh, giving it a probably 25 millimeters diameter or 12.5 millimeter radius. I will select the whole logo, hit the center, hit R for reference, select the maximum extent of the logo, which is this arc, then pick again the center, and I will drag it to the end point of the 12.5 radius. There. We erase the unnecessary objects. And maybe I will expand it a little bit. This is our reference, by the way. So we won't get lost on finding the center again because this whole logo is not symmetrical. There we go. Now we will export this. Simply type DXF out to export it as DXF. I will name it as RNK logo. Hit save. Now we have V. Um, and now we will move on to Fusion 360 and get modeling for the stamp seal or seal stamp. First, we will um, insert the previous DXF in the logo. Um, we'll select the plane sketch. Um, we will select this for now, but later on we will modify it because it's meant to be elevated, elevated or elevated. We'll select the DXF file, the RNK logo. Okay, looks good. Select OK. I think we probably uh, should proceed on to making the handle, oh, no, the main body and then the handle first before, before we proceed on making the actual stamp because it's located underneath. Okay. I will offset this plane for about, I would say, 2 millimeters. Hmm. And then put a since eight millimeter circle here for the base I will extrude that and give it a, give it a height of say 4.5 millimeters oh, probably closer to 5 millimeters oh no um, I forgot to mention that we should consider the positioning of the model already because we are going to 3D print it later on. Should we model it upside down? No. I think this should proceed. But of course, like again like I said, we should consider the 3D printing procedure later while doing this modeling. I think I'd probably give it a 7 meter instead for the height and then give it a chamfer on this edge. For those who don't uh, have an idea, the 3D printer could uh, support 45 degree angles quite seamlessly. 
uh, in mode na uh, require supports like actual supports for three painting the layers when it has 45 degree um, angle for its uh, transitions I give this a five millimeter distance and then extrude this surface for about I say three three millimeters no four four millimeters so um we'll have a nice transition probably chamfer it again yeah three three millimeter distance again equal distances height and depth now that leaves us lead ah oh, six layers Put that along this port. I don't think I should put this chamfer. Um, I think I'm gonna just extrude all the way and give it say, um, say, uh, 40, 30, yeah, 30 uh, millimeter high for the extrusion. Now I'm thinking of adding a bigger uh, a bigger diameter for this uh, grip like uh, geometry up the top. I give it a 35 millimeter diameter and then extrude the whole thing with let's say Five. five millimeters again let me remind that we will be printing this at this position this I'm thinking of adding another chamfer here always equal distance so that you have a 45 degree uh, transition let's say it's 0.5 okay or two millimeter okay Now we can proceed on adding the um, actual stamp. But for now, I think I think I should do also an outline for the stamp, just to make it look good a little bit more. Let's say my five and then another negative one for the outline. Oops. Yeah. I think I'm gonna go and extrude the outline or boundary first. it up. up until the uh, it reaches the base because it's upside down then we'll go on and extrude the characters and symbols I selected new body by the way. This the sketch consists of multiple points. You see? So I selected new body that way, it will complete faster. But I have to uh, use combine later. Okay, that's good. Now we'll proceed on adding some levels. Because this this half on the original logo this half and that half has um, different colors but of course this is a stamp so we can color it so we'll just be um, adding levels so basically we will be extruding it with different heights that way when it's pressed onto the surface it, the, the 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 vision of the two separate sides will be obvious 
so that we will select one side and the next two. But this time we'll be selecting from object. And the object is the surface. And then we will be extruding towards the outside of the snap. Okay. One, one millimeter. Sounds good. So yeah. Still computing. Oh, it's done. As you can see, we have levels. I find it a little bit higher than I wanted it to be. But I guess it works. Because the height of this, this edge to this edge, is one millimeter, so that's pretty tiny if you ask me. And this edge to this edge, supposedly is two millimeters. Let me check. Okay, so we're correct. Two millimeters and one millimeter, so just a tiny bit of difference. Well, of course, very obvious when we press it onto a surface that will stamp it on. Hmm. I think we should do the other side as well. We'll do an, uh, an extrusion here. Let me open the, the logo sketch again. Okay. And another, another sketch. The previous uh, circle that we made. Let me hide this first. Okay. Where is this sketch located? Are you? Voila. So we probably should um, do a, I think we should do another extrude for this other side. Let me see. Okay, so we select the other side, click from object, and we select the bottom surface. We will add 0.5. One seventy five, and then the other one will be one point five. Okay. Wow, twenty minutes. Twenty minutes already for this modeling alone. Um, I will edit this extrusion and give it a one point five height instead. Of, I think we gave it 1 million 34. So, where's the feature? In, uh, here. 1.5. Probably too high. I think 1.25. Okay, looks good to me. Computing. Um, like I mentioned earlier, we were we are going to print this three different this, and three different this on a um, multimaker three D printer. Oh, there we go. Looks good to me. Turn up the origin, and this is. This is the actual stamp, basically. Oh yes, I forgot. Uh, we should join the whole thing or combine. Never mind. I think everything is connected already. So what's left now is testing it. Now the way we test it is simple. We are going to make a single circle here and extrude a cylinder to resemble, um, let's say, a, a piece of, of uh, dough. Select new body so it will not uh, uh, conjoin with this. 
snap model and now we will uh, use the combine tool first select the dough or surface and select the actual stamp seal or seal stamp and we will change this into cut select ok and I guess it works yeah pretty much works now that um, we are happy with the result we will export this into an SDL file so we could um, uh, set the model for printing on Cura um, okay so we will hide this model first uh, I forgot. We should have uh, tipped the keep tools option so the stamp would not disappear. Okay, how will we remove that? And that leaves us with this stamp. Let's. Okay, let's hit save and then uh, click on the uh, file name and then select save as STL. Uh, uh, this is the default settings binary and high refinement just hit ok and then that's how we save it as an sdl now we're moving on to setting it up for printing now on we will be setting up our um, seal stamp model to be printed on the ultimaker printer first we open our file which is the um seal stamp model and we'll be rotating it 90 degrees and then reset the model's position so the bottom will be touching the build plate. The build plate, by the way, is this grid-lined surface. And like I said earlier, we considered the, um, the uh, future printing, so we use 45 degrees for the transitions. So most likely, even if we ask for suggestions using Cura on the on where to put the uh, supports, most likely it will not uh, suggest putting supports. Um, we will be using a 0.4 millimeter nozzle and a pearl white PLA for this uh, particular print. Uh, these settings are predetermined by yours truly, but it's definitely close to the default settings. Of course, 20% uh, uh, infill. And this one, like I said earlier, is the support, which I think uh, will not be needed, but let's see. Uh, big plate adhesion, set to brim, and we're ready to go. Hit slice, correctly slicing. And it says here that it will be done in 43 minutes and we will be consuming 9 grams of filament or 1.1 meter of filament let's check the preview and try to simulate uh, the print and see if there's something wrong everything looks good for now and like I said earlier using a 45 degree for the transition um, definitely would not let uh, Kira suggest supports because it can, uh, it can definitely print well enough on that type of uh, angle and ultimately not need support I think everything looks good so we're going to save the file save the file the output file for uh, Cura is .g code save and now we'll be transferring the file the digital file using uh, a card reader and a USB adapter so basically we'll be inserting the micro USB here to be read by the computer and then once we copy the file we'll, we will be inserting it here in the USB adapter and then placing it inside the Ultimaker printer and then print it afterwards. I will be showing you the process of printing, so stay tuned.